Today we continue exploring Isfahan, the former capital of Persia. The city has a population of 2,300,000 people, making it the third largest city in Iran. The city remains much of its history. It is famous for its Persian Islamic architecture, grand boulevards, covered bridges, palaces, tiled mosques, and gorgeous Zoroastrian fire temple. So it's going to be interesting and even adventurous day. Our hotel was located within walking distance to major sites, like Imam Hussain Square with the building of municipality, Grand Bazaar, Naqsha Jahan Square that we talked about in the previous video, and next door to Hakim Mosque. Iran is a home to a plethora of historical hotels that will make you feel and experience your night's rest like a local. We stayed at Isfahan Traditional Hotel, which is a two-story stucco building wrapped around the central courtyard containing fruit trees, day beds and a pond. Due to the hot dry climate, the pond is an important design featuring cooling the surrounding rooms. Our room costed 30 euros per night, including buffet breakfast at beautifully decorated and traditional style restaurant. Iran is a vast country with various geographic areas with mountainous regions cover about 55% of the country, 23% is desert and only 8% is a forest. I was surprised to see that Isfahan is a green city developing 18 square meters of green space per person. There are many parks in the city where locals love to hang out and have a picnic with family or friends as well as small chill-out street stands to stop by and to enjoy freshly squeezed juice for less than a dollar. Chihel Saturn Palace literally means 40 columns, is a Persian pavilion in the middle of a park at the far end of a long pool, built by Shah Abbas II to be used for his entertainment and receptions. In this palace, Shah Abbas II and his successors would receive dignitaries and ambassadors, either on the terrace or in one of the stately reception halls. The architecture of this palace is a combination of Chinese, Iranian and French architecture. The porch of Chehel Satun consists of two parts. One section forms the entrance of the hall and it calls the mirror hall, and another is based on 18 tall wooden pillars. The palace contains many frescoes and paintings on ceramic. They depict specific historical scenes and the battles. There are also less historical but even more aesthetic compositions in the traditional miniature style, which celebrate the joy of life and love. The Chihel Saturn Palace is registered as one of Iran's 23 registered World Heritage Sites under the name of the Persian Garden. The Zoroastrian Fire Temple is an archaeological complex located 8 km from the city center of Isfahan. So we hired a car with a guide who accompanied us to the top of the hill. It's the third largest fire temple among the other seven fire temples, remained from Iranian ancient history and dates back to Sassanid era, which is around the 3rd 6th century AC. The hill rises about 210 meters above the surrounding plain. 
The ascent into the hill was not as easy as I expected. It's a steep slope formed by sharp rocks, and our shoes were not designed for this kind of hiking. Anyway, my mom was doing better than me and was always ahead. The ancient Iranians followed Zoroastrian religion before converting to Islam. The fire was considered as one of the four sacred elements in the world, so they performed special religious ceremonies and chanted religious hymns in order to honor and to show respect to the fire. The sacred fire of Zoroastrians was kept in protected fireplace and should never be extinguished. The walls are constructed of mud bricks but lace bonded by the clay reed mixture for most strength. In the 10th century, the buildings were used by Isfahan inhabitants to hide from tax collectors. One part of the complex is a tower-like circular building on the very top of the same hill. The structure is 20 meters high and is known by the locals as a Tower of Sacrifice and appears to have been a military watchtower with a flare that could be lit to warn of an approaching enemy. Another feature of the complex are the remains of a citadel of about 20 buildings. Several of them were used to house the sacred fire, and others include what may have been storage rooms and living quarters for priests and affluent pilgrims. If you enjoyed watching this video, I encourage you to subscribe, click like and hit notification bell button to get updated of the new releases.